Good evening. Everyone can hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, I'm not quite as pro as these guys. I'm more of a hack in terms of an entrepreneur. Um, everything I did is very uh, lean, uh, and you can read through that and see there's uh, not much planning and not, much, uh, not many resources behind it. So we'll start, and I'll talk you through... Um, I've chosen 10 photos that represent uh, what took me here, what got me here. So this is the first one, and uh, I don't know who this is, but uh, it's a young guy that thought he could buy piglets for $30 and sell them for 150 And uh, he saw the market there and uh, thought it would be worth capturing. And this is me when I was, uh, I think, around eight. Uh, I grew up in Tasmania, which is uh, Australia, far away in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think I, I was an entrepreneur from the beginning. I, I knew... I knew I wanted to uh, to start things quickly, to, to see success quickly, and this was uh, this was the beginning. And um, on our little farm there, I was seven, eight years old, and I had these two little piglets who were cute, and I saw the money making potential. I saw it, and uh, three or four months later, I think I was spending the majority of my money on this this fencing here. Uh, that's where all the money went, because as you know, pigs grow and grow and grow. So uh, that was the first fuck up, just not planning ahead and not uh, seeing the reality. But uh, I think it's beautiful as well, just uh, going after something that <laughs> might, seem, uh, might seem unreal at the beginning. This is, uh, I think, the next fuck up that I made. So, um, Pit Street. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so I, I grew up, um, my parents are Swiss and Spanish and uh, from New Zealand and Ireland. So. Basically, I'm uh, all pretty much 100% lost. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is this is me when I decided that I was going to uh, going to live a respectable life and uh, and get a job as a suit and tie, basically. So I went through and studied economics. Uh, I got a job at a consulting firm called KPMG, and uh, I think this was about six months into the job. Uh, it was not what I imagined. It was didn't give me any satisfaction. It didn't give me the the rush. It didn't give me. The, it didn't thrill me at all. And uh, I lasted three long years. And uh, it really taught me that you can't you you can't fit yourself into what people expect. Um, I think there was a, there's an expectation on a lot of us uh, as you're growing up. You study a certain degree to get a job, to live a certain life, and it's, uh, it's all very set up for you. And you have to own up to yourself sooner rather than later, uh, exactly what makes you happy, exactly what satisfies you. And uh, I knew pretty quickly that um, doing this and, and not leaving a really emotional mark on the world wasn't what I wanted to do. So I left, and I lost myself a little bit. Um, <laughs> so this is, I think, this is a few months later, and um, I decided to take a year-long holiday in Spain. Actually, no, it's, I mean, I studied a master's in Spain, which is kind of the same thing. <laughs> um, so I did a master's at Pompeo Fabra in, um, it was in international refugee studies. So uh, I really decided I was going to make an impact on the world. It was a very, a big shift away from what I was uh, originally doing. And this was just one of the things that I, that I did, I uh, used to, I uh, go down to the south of Spain and windsurf and really uh, lost myself a little bit. And I think the lesson here, um, not such a fuck up, but just the lesson is that you have to um, sometimes step back from this uh, reality and this life you're living to get perspective. And it's only by stepping outside of that comfort zone, outside of the, this life path you have, that you really get a sense of what makes you happy. So I kept on going and... Uh, despite having plans to move back to Australia, I had my car in storage, my clothes, friends, family, I had a dog. Um, that all stayed in Australia and I stayed in Spain. Um, and I decided to really follow that true passion which was food from the beginning. And it was always present in my life. Um, while I was at KPMG, this the consulting firm, I used to do uh, dinner parties in my house on the weekends. Um, uh, I guess like a supper club, like a, a pop sort of experience. 
I also decided to um, to take a few weeks off to do MasterChef in Australia as well, um, and that was that was a fuck up for sure. <laughs> um, that was a fuck up because there's a video on YouTube that um, <laughs> never delete. Uh, it's with me for life. Um, so uh, yeah. So anyway, food was always sort of part of my life. It was always there, and um, I knew that somehow I was going to make it part of my life in a more professional way. And this is the beginning. So while I was working at uh, ESSE, uh, in the research department at the university, um, I decided to start this, uh, this cooking experience. I saw this gap in the market and I thought there's tourists coming here, they're, <clears throat> they're wandering down the Ramla, they're eating frozen paella, they're not, uh, they're not connecting, they're not in, there has to be some other way. So I had this idea and um, this is the photo taken about three or four weeks later after that initial idea. So. I got this uniform done, this uh, great jacket here. Um, I got a knife that made me feel like a chef. Um, I made a website, WordPress again, and um, and I started just um, growth hacking, which was basically just uh, leaving really positive reviews for myself on uh, lots of different sites uh, around the world. Um, always talking in third person. I've got, I think, uh, a list of twenty or thirty email addresses that. Um, used to that, and I think every company does this, so it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, I was a company of one, and so this was three weeks later. Um, the first client came to me, it was a hen's party, which, um, yeah, that was, that was a fuck up as well. Um, but it was basically the idea was to really give them something personal with this personal experience, and I loved what I was doing, and <clears throat> I grew the brand and the business um, over the course of six months to the point where. Um, where I could quit the, the job I was doing in the university and focus on this full time. And uh, I think the, the learning, not so much the fuck up, but the learning was just that you have to believe that you can eventually convert your passion into something tangible. And I knew that all these little things along the way would eventually make sense. And uh, KPMG gave me discipline and a way of thinking. And um, the studies gave me this, and traveling gave me this. And, it all, it all came together. <clears throat> the next um, sort of project I moved on to was an even, an even closer knit of all my skills and all my experiences. And it was with this company called Eat With, which, um, which is a startup. It's a platform for food creatives to basically be a chef. So <clears throat> it's a little bit like Airbnb. It's got the same model, but relates to dinners in, in houses all around the world. And, this was three years ago. We we went to uh, TechCrunch and we and we were one of the finalists in the uh, TechCrunch Dis disrupt competition. And I lived this product. It was uh, it was so close to me. It was blending technology. It was blending people. It was blending food. It was it represented me completely, and I became so emotionally attached to it. Um, I wouldn't sleep. I didn't want to sleep. I just wanted to to make this happen. And I think anyone who is from the, I was at the company from the beginning, and anyone who is a founder or starts at a company from the beginning has this this mad energy of not being able to let go, not being able to sleep, not wanting to do anything apart from make it work. <clears throat> so the fuck up, I think, for me was um, this is my one of my best friends from Australia, and uh, this is on the metro in Barcelona, and this was our um, he came over with, a, with another friend, and we had a three week tour of Europe. And uh, this is us uh, on holiday. So you can see his, his, uh, at his sort of uh, way of having holiday in mind. And uh, this is, I think, what, uh, what was something that I learned pretty quickly was that you need, to, um, you need to really accept that you can't, uh, you can't focus on one thing all the time. You have to appreciate everything that comes along along the way. So no matter how passionate you are about a product or how, how involved you are or if it's your company or you always have, always have to enjoy the small things. So when your friends come on holiday, you also have to be uh, drinking in public uh, with them. <laughs> <coughs> this was a, <coughs> so with food I was, I was always open to new ideas and new companies and new concepts and this was a company called Food Shooter, a startup based in Canada, and they approached me to do a series of pop-up events around Europe. And uh, this was this was a photo from one of them, and 
Uh, I'm a very trusting person, I think. Uh, I didn't go through um, I didn't go through a bad experience when I was growing up and uh, always stayed very trusting and when a company approached you with this idea and you, you sign a very flimsy contract, you just go at it with your, with your heart. Um, you don't think about these things and I invest my own money in setting up these events and hiring spaces, hiring people, musicians, all these sorts of things and uh, when it came to recovering costs, uh, it just didn't come. And, um, I hired a lawyer in Canada to go after them, and uh, it never, it never came to anything. They eventually declared bankruptcy. So that was a lesson for me and a fuck up. Just learning, learning to trust people from the beginning, and always, always come with an open mind, but also have in the back of your, in the back of your mind, know that uh, not everyone is as, uh, as, uh, as good as you. Not everyone is as, as honest as you. Okay, this is this is uh, this was my old place um, where I used to host these dinners, and for a while this was listed on TripAdvisor as the number one restaurant in Barcelona. Um, so I'm not going to go into the growth hacks we used to do that um, because I think this is being recorded. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but for a while this was uh, this was number one in Barcelona, and. Um, it was, uh, it was a little experiment for us, for the company, for Equid, and uh, it worked amazingly. And um, we had diners who were looking through tickets, they were looking at Papas 24, and then they saw it was called Papas, basically. <laughs> and uh, they used to turn up to my apartment, which was in an in a, in a interesting street, um, and, uh, and just flip out, basically. They'd come in the door, and they'd see me there with they just they, they didn't know what was going on, and uh, I learned that it pays to be transparent, and alcohol can't make people relax um, to to the full extent. Um, but it was an amazing time. It was uh, six months of doing these, probably three or four nights a week, cooking for people in my apartment, and um, and it was just an amazing experience. But I think we really learned quickly that you have to be transparent. You have to be uh, open with people. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, the latest project, and we talked a lot about crowdfunding. I'm uh, about three weeks ago. I started the process of crowdfunding for a cookbook, and the the fuck up was just uh, fuck the publishers basically. Um, we I worked on this with a photographer for two years, and um, um, we had a really a really high quality product, and uh, went through publisher after publisher after publisher, just believing that we'd we'd get a deal. And it never came, so we thought we'd just do it ourselves. And um, so we, uh, we, with a with a designer friend, we we set it all up and uh, and put it on Kickstarter. And I think there's uh, two weeks left, and we're uh, 60, 70 percent. So it looks like it's going to go ahead. Um, but this was basically just another lesson: just go after it yourself. There's there's nothing holding you back. If you have an idea, if you want to start a business, start a cooking school. Write it, write a book, just do it, and there's there's platforms out there that let you do that. So yeah, just like everyone said tonight, just don't hold back, just just make it happen. And then this one, <clears throat> I think just to finish with, um, I just want to go through some of the people that really inspire me and and um, the lessons I learned from each of them. I'll go from the top left. Anthony Bourdain is uh, is a New York chef who. Who I guess for me he was the first one that made food cool, made food something that could be uh, could be a career. Uh, the next one on the right is Tim Ferriss. Um, he's uh, he's famous for doing experiments on himself, and I think um, just proved to me that you can push and push and push yourself. So he he tests himself as to uh, how long how long humans can put their breath underwater and these sorts of things, and he he really proves that. It's, it's up to us to prove to, to push our limits. Next one on the right is Daft Punk, and um, this is a really recent one that really inspired me. Um, I saw the documentary a few weeks ago, and and uh, it was really proved to me that they're they're all about authenticity. There there was nothing. They didn't want their personalities. They didn't want their their faces and their celebrity to get in the way of their brand and what they're about. And I think. It pays to be really passionate about what you what you are and uh, and not compromise on anything. And they, they didn't compromise on anything. They never took the helmets off. 
Um, and that's, uh, there was a whole lot of respect there. <coughs> the next one, Marcus Aurelius on the left here, is um, the respect there comes from just, he was, he was all about um, being able to look at life and put a positive spin on it using your own mind. So um, the way you see the world, um, it's up to you how you see the world, basically. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have to be negative, it doesn't have to be, um, you don't, don't have to be in a bad place. It's up to you, and you can use your mind to, to, to see the world in a certain way. Uh, Frank Abagnale is on the next one. Um, this is from the movie Catch Me If You Can, and mm -hmm. I think he's probably one of my biggest heroes, just because he proves that you can be anything without really needing to go through business school, without really needing to <coughs> get any uh, formal documentation or papers. Um, and Business I think that's the way yeah. we should all live. It's just just doing it. Uh, not not uh, waiting for anyone to say you're a chef or waiting for anyone to say you're an author. Just, uh, just do it. And then Hunter S. Thompson, just because uh, he's like the coolest guy around. Um, he was a gonzo journalist and I think the way he lived and the way his zest for life, his passion for life was probably what inspired me the most. I'm losing my voice, but I'm sorry. Um, but <clears throat> I think the the biggest, not fuck up, the biggest learning from, from all of this is just to go after your passion and <clears throat> just know that it'll all make sense. So all the um, the jobs you've had, the little experiences you have, the people you meet, the travels you do, it all eventually makes sense. So when I was at KPMG going through numbers again and again and again, or when I was on Master Chef, or when I was traveling, or when I met this person, those things they seem separate at the at the at the time. They feel like they're disjointed, but at the end, it all comes together, and uh, and you end up using all those skills, using all the, those experiences. So, um, yeah, just enjoy each moment and know that it all makes sense at the end. Okay.